All right, everyone, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. Give me a touch on the core plays and the best bets here for the Shriners Children's Open. Yes, I'm slightly changing up the style of content for the fall series, trying to make it quicker, faster, give you guys the top plays, and then you guys can get out of here. I'm going to be using the 9 5 cheat sheet for the data just because DraftKings and even the PGA Tour are behind on their data. So I'm going to be using the 9 5 cheat sheet because, sadly enough, the golf world doesn't even care about it. So this is more up to date than both those sites. I want to start out with Adam Shank as a core play, guys. He is just looking like one of the better priced plays on the slate here so we can see course history wise has played extremely well here that's probably going to be his highest appeal is how well he has played at this track 12th third 27th 18th you know four straight make cuts of this tournament all of them being top 30 or better finishes we look at key stat wise guys and all the key stats that we're looking at which are going to be good drive percentage stroke skin approach ball striking and stroke skin to the green those are the four most important key stats of this tournament we see that year in and year out and he is not bad and really any of those good drive percentage could be a little bit better there 57th in the field but other than that none of those data points really worry me too much as a whole he's still going to be a top 20 any stat fit there uh recent form wise we do see one miscut mixed in there five starts to go but we know that he had been someone that was close to winning a, a couple of times there even dating back to three starts to go six starts to go and seven starts to go so dfs wise he makes a lot of sense as a play now looking at betting wise where can we find the best bets for adam shank because he is clearly someone that we want to be going out of our way to play when we look at the betting chart we can find out where we are getting the best odds to potentially bet in on and let's say if you're trying to bet him outright we can see that basically every single site has about 30 to one. I would say those are going to be pretty good odds. So I'd be fine with taking those odds really on any of those sites. I do feel like potentially betting him to top 10 would be a little bit more fun of a bet. Three to one there on either FanDuel or DraftKings. We are getting a made cut prop on him as well. About 0 0.3 to one on FanDuel. So also not a terrible one. You know what? If I really had to choose, I'd probably find the top 40 bet on DraftKings or FanDuel and make that or bet MGM and make that. It's probably the safest route for him. All right, guys. So from there, it's going to be very difficult not to love Tom Hoagie in DFS, especially at that price tag of 80 or 8,700. I mean, he is just looking like a standout play at that price tag. So he has had tremendous results at this tournament, finishing fourth, 14th, 24th. Obviously, we love that. We look at the key stat data for him. Ranks out top 10 or better in good drive percent, stroke skin approach. And he has been someone that has been playing well this fall. Had a top 20 finish last week. We do see like the longer we go for form, the more it falls off. But this is a week, and especially at the start of falling, we're going to be defaulting to a little bit more of guys that have played and have played well in this fall series thus far. We do know that with fantasy golf, the more time players dive off, the more variance that they have in their game. And it makes sense. You know, shot to shot, that stuff starts to add up. And so I do want to be defaulting to players that have played during this fall swing and he fits that bill pretty well on top of that he's just kind of checking all the boxes maybe could be a little bit better of a specialist ranking out 41st in the field for those of you guys that don't know specialist data is going to be taking in all the unique characteristics of that week's tournament uh like the style of course like the green types course designer par 72 weather what type of scoring event is it location of the event that's all being put into the specialist data and he's ranking out really well there all right guys so let's just go ahead and take a peek at his betting odds that we are getting for him outright wise we can see we are getting a pretty spread out board in terms of where we we could potentially be betting we are getting him at 35 to 1 on DraftKings. that's going to be the best spot for you guys to bet him outright that's actually one of my favorite bets there that seems to be a clear mispricing that DraftKings has out there and then from there i do really like the idea of just betting him to get a top 20 finish at 1.5 to 1 that seems like a really good return you know you look at his average results at this tournament over the past three years over his past three starts here average finish of 14th he's finished top 20 twice and finished 24th the other time so probably the safest bet would just be a made cut bet if you want to go heavy on that i'd be fine with that but over, overall i think this is going to be one of the better bets that we are getting on the slate and then for me i am kind of defaulting to adam svensson as a play now you're going to see andrew putnam ranking out as a really good play right there and also bo Hazler ranking out as a really good play right there andrew putnam coming in off a of miscut kind of fine with that he has good course history but i like adam svensson just given the form is you know one of the best in the field and like both long-term and short-term form some of the best in the field really he's made seven straight cuts in a row all of them being top 40 or better finishes so if you're looking at maybe a top 40 bet for him that would make sense dfs wise to get him at 8.2 that is something that i really like now course history has not been good here made the cut last year finished in 69th missed the cut the year prior to that but really what we have seen over the past few years when looking at course history is that yes having good course history typically leads to a player playing well if they are 
you know, checking the boxes, staffing and recent form wise, but also just having some course experience typically means leads to them making the cut. So I like the fact that he does have that course experience. Look at the key stat wise, top 42 or better than all the key stats that we're looking at. Not an elite staff fit, only top 12 in the field, but not terrible there. The biggest knock on him is going to be that lack of course history. But overall, looking like a stellar play at a really good price tag. Now we go ahead and take a peek at his odds that we're getting for Adam Svensson. We're going to see 45 to 1. I mean, those are pretty darn good odds for a guy that has finished top 20 or better in two straight starts. For a guy that has been playing some really consistent golf, if you guys are someone that has. So this is my problem. It's like I, I, I know my audience is mostly U.S. based, so I typically focus on... DraftKings, FanDuel, and really BetMGM. But if you're someone that has access to other you know, places to bet, you can get him at 45 to 1. Now we do see the odds are raking him at 15th overall. We saw him ranking out a little bit better there. So we are getting a pretty good edge there, I would say. And he's another one, like 1.9 1 to 1 to top 20. That's something I really like. We have seen him finish top 20 or better two straight weeks. He's a top 20 stat fit. Like all signs point to him being a good option for us to bet as a top 20 finisher. Then from there, Davis Thompson's really standing out as a play this week. Um, the pricing feels right, though. The reason why he's coming in as well as he has is because of that good course history, that top 12 finish last year. On top of that, he has finished well over his last three starts. And his like bad finishes haven't been terrible really over his past nine starts. So we like that specialist ranking top 10 in the field there. You know, all in all, a pretty solid play. Is he exactly a core play? Uh, probably not but he's more of a risk reward based play to me one of the plays that's really standing out is gonna be chad ramey he has been playing well uh over his past two starts the 16th and the 19th place finish you look at his miscut cut wasn't a terrible start and over his past nine starts really good stuff there only one missed cut mixed in there so playing extremely well he's gonna be a top five specialist as well and we're getting him at 7k we can see a top 12 staff at top 12 course history rank and he's finished 28th and 14th at this event. Not the best staff, and that's going to be the worry, okay? Worth noting that, yes, the PGA Tour has not been updating their stats, so a lot of these stats are going to be pulled in from last year. Now, I am able to update the strokes gain stats. That's going to be up to date, but all the other stats that I typically have in there, it's not going to be pulling in that. So we don't have a true indication of exactly how well he's been playing uh, with some stats like ball striking or good drive percentage, like over the last five, last 10, last 15. Now we go and look at Chad Ramey. Like we are getting some really good odds. If you are someone that can bet on Bovada 90 to one, those are some really good odds that we are getting right there because if we look at the average sports guys. We're getting them at 75 to one. You can bet them 80 to one on FanDuel. That is a really good number. And typically, guys i i don't like to tell people to shop around um but golf is like a week a one week event if that makes sense where you can spend the time to do that whereas like nba and stuff like that or even um daily bets in general i feel like people waste more time doing that rather than finding the best bet they try to find the best number and i do feel like people do that a little bit too much on mondays but now we're sitting here tuesday and we're still seeing we're getting some really good lines on him Take advantage of that. That's a really good number that we're getting out there. Um, shoot, we can get him at 2.8 to 1 to top 20. Now, I do think he's a better bet if we can get him for a May cut or top 40 finish. Uh, someone like Russell Knox was someone I ended up betting heavily on BetMGM to top 40. That ended up being a little bit more of a sweat for me, but I think Chad Ramey would be a good pick for that to top 40. But also, we can see... And based off of this, guys, like BetMGM has it set at 3.2 to 1 to finish top 20. Yeah, I like that. I like the number a decent amount. Then the last player I want to mention is going to be Chaston Hadley, who's at a very good price tag. Let's look at the course history here. 37th, 27th, missed cut, and then top 20. So already we can see maybe would be a good made cut type of bet. He is someone that has really been playing well. 35th, 62nd, 33rd, 27th, 6th, missed cut, 33rd, 20th, 43rd. So really good stuff for him, uh, both long-term, but but also recently ranking out top 12 in the field in recent form rank over the past five starts 23rd overall specialist rank top 20 in the field really good stuff there stat fit that's going to be the worry once again i mean guys the fall event where you don't have the best fields not everyone's going to be an ideal play we got to make some sacrifices somewhere that's where it is. But all in all, like he ranks out well in good drive percentage, ranks well in stroke skin approach. The worry is ball striking and the worry is stroke skin tee to green. This course isn't too long, so the length isn't as crucial. As long as he can be average in the field, he'll be fine. And as long as, you know, the strokes gain approach and good 
dry percentage don't fall off too much, we should be fine there. And Grant, and given the fact that he's been playing well, I think we're going to be good to roll with that. And now, lastly, we'll just take a peek at Chaston Hadley. We are getting him forward made cut bet. And like I said, I think that's probably one of the better ones or top 40 bet. Uh, once again, with him, you can bet him to finish top 20. I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit too tight. That's kind of pushing it. Would it be shocking to see him in contention to win? Outright wise, I would say no, but I just, I don't see that happening. That being said, like I went to seeing Luke List winning, especially in the way that he did. Um, ben Griffin, poor guy, TikTok star Ben Griffin couldn't pull through there. Um, but maybe this is one where, you know, come Sunday, you can cash out on it. I, I get that. Now guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give a like and subscribe. If you go out, guys want access to these tools, as well as many other for fantasy golf, make sure to be taking advantage of that. It's 95sports.com and it's available for just $10 a month. All right, that's going to be all for today's video. Thanks for watching. As always, let's keep cashing.